Good afternoon. Um, welcome to episode number 598. And the topic today is are both genders screwed? And I'll explain all about that in a moment and jump into this whole conversation that's been brewing for the last few days. Before I get there, let me choose myself and then we'll get into the fun stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at number 598, so two more to 600. And a few days ago I started talking about um, our men's, oh, our men's, no, men are screwed or our men's screwed, something like that. And so I'm breaking down the whole toxic masculinity thing. And yesterday I had a download about toxic machoism versus toxic masculinity, which created a whole other discussion. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to hit, take the bull by the horns today and just, just address it. Are both genders screwed? <laughs> so that's the, top, that's the topic on the, on the show today. And it's, it's partly to deal with the Me Too conversation, toxic masculinity, toxic femininity that's come out now, and the, word, and, the, and the hashtag that I think I coined yesterday, which is toxic machoism. Maybe it will spread, I don't know. And... And the thing is, what's interesting also is what came up um, actually early today on a post I saw in a friend's in a friend's group. This thing about control, the toxicity of this, and, and, and let me back up a second. The whole toxic prefix is implying that it is poisonous, that it, it is hurtful and harmful, and perhaps even lethal to other people. But I want to take it back to another level, which is basically the influence that we have over other people in our lives, or should they have the influence we'd like to to um, put over on other people in our lives and those that do it to us so it's a two-way street and I did say I both gender screwed because I want to include both men and women in this conversation so I'm attempting to carry cover, cover a fairly big broad um, conversation <laughs> well, di well monologue right now but I want to put some pieces on the table because for me what I'm aware of is there is a lot that's been brewing lately and there's also some well, let me. If you didn't see the Gillette commercial that started about three, four days ago, no more than that, five days ago. It's Attack of the Crows. I don't know if you can hear over the microphone, but we get crows every afternoon that show up and just start digging through the gardens, and there's a big flock of them. And if you can't, I can hear them myself. I'm not sure you can hear them over the microphone. Anyway, staying on topic. The Gillette commercial that came out just under a week ago was a provocative ad because it spoke to something that's been well I hadn't said it's been buried but it's been talked about for a while there was actually a movie that came out a year and a half ago I think it was now maybe two years ago which was basically called um, The Mask That We The Mask That We Are Wear or The Mask That We Are Born With I forget which of the title exactly is, but it's about boys being influence to become men in certain ways and this is what really contributed to the toxic masculinity piece that this whole thing that was in this commercial which I know some people are having an issue with but the, some of the points they made which are very valid because I went through some of the stuff they talked about in that commercial with bullying and like suck it up don't cry be a man hold it together all this sort of stuff which to me is part of what contributes to the shutting down of masculine expression and reverting into the machismo, which is like, I'm tough, I can handle it, I can be strong and screw everybody else, which is what is, for me, the toxic machi machoism or machismo, because it's that um, shielding that protects the vulnerability inside, whereas the masculine man shows vulnerability without fear and is strong because of that, very different. So that's why I have an issue with toxic masculinity being put together, because I don't believe it's the truth. I believe it's toxic machoism that's causing the problems. So that's one piece put over here for now <laughs> toxic femininity that's come up and I don't have a word other than femininity to use in this context I wish there was because for me femininity, femininity is a powerful statement of feminine authority power wonder, wonderment etc but the toxic femininity hashtag that's grown up is because there are so many women who have been caught in the trap and it's a trap are trying, are basically belittling all men cutting all men off at the knees or cutting their balls off or some other metaphor to make them feel worse because somehow mankind has done them a disservice as they want to cut all men down because of that. That's a massive globalization. And it's also ineffective because you can't stop all men. 
So let's put that one on the side. Let's put it on this side. <laughs> There's two pieces. The bottom line for me in this conversation that really coming up is about control, which I mentioned at the beginning. Most of the toxic, no, let's, let's throw the word out for a second. Most of the behavior that these men who have triggered or have reawakened the Me Too conversation were basically doing things from a place of control. Whether it was sexual or not, it was control underneath it all. And that's one of those dangerous things that people play with. Because if you think you can control somebody else, you're assuming that you're, um, and you're assuming big time, that you deserve to have some more power over somebody else. And that's a mistaken approach. Even with your kids, even with your kids as a parent, controlling them is not the right choice. Encouraging, yes. Supporting them, yes. Guiding them, yes. But controlling, no. And that's where I think this toxic conversation comes from, is about control or lack of control. There is such a discord, I believe, in the world right now because what's happening with the government that's upsetting a lot of people is because it doesn't feel like we can control it. We're out of control. They're out of control. Different, different meanings in those places. And so we feel somehow that we are screwed by them. There's also the feeling of relationships where people are in relationship where the feeling of control becomes a power struggle between the two partners versus a contribution to both partners. I talk, I've talked many times in broadcasts and it's in my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, that relationships are not 50-50, but 100-100. When you think the relationship is 50-50, there's almost an, uh, an unconscious drive to gain control of the other 50%, which puts you in charge, puts you in control and dominates the other person. That's messy, very messy. And it's also inaccurate because the reality is, I've said this before, that we are in relationships of 100-100. And when you are both 100% present, 100% accountable, 100% contributing to the relationship, there's no need for control. There's no need to toxic behavior because you recognize and honor each other for who you are and it's a way of being free in a relationship. Unfortunately, 98% or something like that of relationships don't work that way. The population on this planet tends to be dysfunctional in a relationship. Sorry about that. So what I, what I speak to and what I speak about is for the, for the drastic minority of people who want to do things better than they've done before. If you're watching my broadcast, thank you, because hopefully you're getting some value from some of my talks over the last 598 broadcasts. So I, I put the title out almost facetiously saying, are both genders screwed? I think both genders are screwing themselves as a generality, and it's not general because not everybody is doing it. But the majority of people seem to be caught up in this maleness and femaleness, not, and not masculine and feminine, not masculine and feminine, that forces them in the place of being separate and being one down or one up. And the truth is we have such inequality, and I'm refer referencing back to this morning's service at Agape. If you don't get a chance to watch it, it was a great message by Reverend Julie Moret, who was covering this or speaking this week because Reverend Michael's out of town. And she's talking about the inequality that we deal with and how things are so out of balance. And a lot of that is because there's a fear and control that are fighting each other. And when we start to really recognize that who we are is enough, not so much, no, not even that. When we recognize that who we are is real and who we are is full and who we are is infinite, let's play with that one for a second. This is Sunday, by the way, so I can go spiritual on you. <laughs> but the reality is that who we are is enough. We are full, we are wholeness, we are, we are unique and, um, I use the word, divine, which means as spiritual beings having human experience, which is part of the language I speak from, being on this planet requires us to, to um, operate in a way that hopefully teaches us lessons. Some of those lessons come painfully. Some of, the lessons come, some of the lessons come easily. I don't know if we have a choice over that. I think we may have pre-chosen before we came in. That's, another, that's a whole other conversation that's more spiritual and woo-woo than some people are ready for. So let me bring it back to, to this realm. So to bring the point home, my suggestion to you my invitation to you is reflect, for example, let's say your homework for tonight is looking back over the past week, or if you want to start with just today or this weekend, your choice, is look back around at people in your life or interactions you've had or situations you were in this past few days and notice where, one, you tried to control something or someone, two, where something or someone tried to control you. If either one of those is a habit, is triggering, is needed by you, you're doing yourself a disservice. 
That simple. The desire to be controlled or the desire to control are ego structures. They're not spirit led, they're not heartfelt, they're not true. If the desire, and this is back to the conversation I had earlier, the, the ego desire is to express in the world. And for some of us who say, well, it, it wasn't me, it was my ego, or some people are so egotistical and all this sort of stuff, I think some of the ego egotism ties into that toxicity side of things. Not gender based, just toxic, because egotis egotism and um, those egoic structures are very um, physically li linked. And the physical world is a lot about limitation or lack or um, competition. So that control piece comes from that place. Recognizing that we are all individual, whole, complete beings, there is no need for that. The trap we fall into, which is part of my, um, my lesson and my teaching, <laughs> both, is to recognize I don't need anything from anybody else, nor do you. There are things we like to have and things we'll enjoy receiving from other people. But if you need it and take it or control somebody to give it or, or get it, that's dysfunctional. That's the codependent trap that this world keeps teaching. And it is a challenge that, um, in fact, another conversation this morning I'm bringing in, that for, gen for thousands of years, we've had this dysfunction going on. And I'll add this piece in too, why not? The world has been a patriarchal run society and religion and culture for millennia. However, before that, so pre 2000, 3000 years ago, there was a lot of feminine leadership. The goddess movement was very strong. There's a lot of feminine deities and God that was she versus God that was he for many different cultures going back many years. This is an interesting manifesto, this part of the manifesto. I firmly believe that what happened was at some point in time, men got so fed up with being, sorry, I, so men got fed up with feeling they were being judged or being less than, which wasn't true, but they felt that way, decided to create a religious structure and an organizational structure that put them in charge. And hence the patriarchal movement really happened. Whether it was done as a revenge reaction to, but it certainly is what I believe started happening. And so for the last couple of thousand years or so or more, we've had this um, ongoing patriarchal control that has put men in a place where it's easier for them to be in charge than women. And it's a disparity. We haven't evolved beyond that. Maybe this, that's the next millennia or the next thing that's going to happen is that we're going to find a place of equality where it's not the fa it's not going to be the patriarchal um, structure or the matriarchal structure. It would be a joint structure that's inclusive of both. I don't know how it's going to happen, but maybe my messages can help to contribute towards that. Um, I'm just seeing if anything I missed. I went all over the map and, and I apologize for that. Just what was coming through is like a download today. But I want to put this piece on the table because there's such a shift that I believe can happen if we all choose into it, which is to release the patriarchal society structure, release the matriarchal society structure that has been hidden for a long time. And ladies, I'm not trying to say you can't have it, but I believe there's a time for us moving to a collaborative structure that is inclusive of men and women that allows us to be equal, respectful, and aligned. Hmm. The manifesto. <laughs> I talked about this yesterday. There's some stuff brewing. I know that I'm not sure if I'm writing things down yet. Yeah, I was going to write things down yesterday, but life took off. But this is something coming through that's about to shift us as a culture. We are in a place where we need a change. The change that is going to bring men and women to the ta to the conversation as equal partners, and we ain't there yet. So I hope this has been a provocative thought to maybe give you some thought ideas about what could change. So I'm going to ask you in your life where you can see some shifts happening, where you can have an equality between both and a desire to contribute versus take. It feels open-ended. I don't know. I don't have a nice bow to tie this up with, but I want to just put this on the table because this for me is an open-ended conversation. I, I don't have an answer for it yet. So this is what's coming up for me and I'm sharing it with you. But I do invite you to look back again, the homework I was provided, I offered earlier, is to look back at your life the last few days or the last week or so and look where control was either taken or given. Where you want to take control of something or somebody else, 
or you were or something or somebody else took control of you your life your time your space whatever that was if somebody kept talking and you couldn't shut them up that's controlling your time as well just another thought so consider what it is for you and if it is if stuff comes up for you i'd like you to put comments below and let me know what what what's true for you is there a place in your life where you would like to let go of that where, you, where are places you like to be more in balance or a place in your life where you want to have more um freedom because control and freedom don't go together and nor does balance and control go together either all right so i've got homework for you that that will keep me busy <laughs> um, this is my facebook live that i do every day by the way at 5 p.m pacific time two more to 600 i do this at 5 p.m pacific time every day and uh this one's interesting this one there's a lot brewing and, and so I, if you didn't get uh, if you didn't get a nice tied up nice little package in with a bow on the top my apologies it wasn't going to happen that way it didn't feel like it was the title of today was really opening up a conversation so i invite your comments below if you're watching this on facebook or watching it on youtube and i'll give you the links for those so you know where to find them so facebook my do them live on my personal page on facebook which is facebook.com forward slash barry selby if you want to watch the archives they're on my business page they're on my facebook page too but my business page is where everything goes oh well, glad you. Hi, <laughs> Jermaine. Glad you could still catch this. As the FC Championship game is also on. Well, I'm I'm glad you, you're catching that. I, I'm happy the Rams got through. So <laughs> I just got. The, I wasn't actually able to watch the game. I just saw some highlights and got the score, and that was good enough for me. So we'll see who wins the AFC to join the Rams in Atlanta in uh, a few weeks. So with that, um, <laughs> thank you, Jermaine, for your <laughs> input. <laughs> I love it. Um, replays so business page where the archives live which is facebook.com forward slash barry selby dot author i will spawn to youtube so you can watch them on my youtube channel which is barry selby please subscribe to my channel playlist there is messages from the masculine and then it's also on itunes under messages from the masculine a play uh, the podcast you can subscribe to that and download the audios um that's it i think i'll put the links actually i'll put links in the comments for my book and also for the rocket 2019 playbook because i'm it's getting towards the late part of january and for some people they haven't started doing resolutions so if you're stuck about how you want to plan this year my rocket 2019 playbook will help you with that um and that's about it i appreciate you watching appreciate you being with me and again any thoughts you have about this topic or have thoughts about control put in the comments below and i'll speak to you tomorrow at 5 p.m pacific time and uh thank you Jermaine. thanks you're here and I will see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.